what I am going to do is I am going to take you through a journey of how I pivoted my messaging techniques to find candidates and where I might find them. So real quick, I'm going to do this all the very hard way. So if you've got an easier way to do this, I recommend that you tune in, that you turn up, you go with a, with a higher EZ, that you jump into this type of conversation. Because what we're doing in the conversation today is I am going to take you on a journey. I'm going to take you on a magical trip where we are going to reach out to 300, well, actually 280 more candidates via their email addresses. We are going to send them a message and we are going to figure out what resonates with the candidate. And this is kind of like a user story or user testing, having that conversation with the candidate about what works for them, what doesn't work for them, what's spammy, um, so that we can really take our game to the next level. So about our next level, um, you know, Mike gave a great intro. I'm Brian. I currently work at McAfee Security, where I'm building our software engineering corporate functions piece. Um, I believe that's my responsibility to help you recruiters and you candidates who might have ended up here just randomly. Uh, I think it's my responsibility to take you from better to best. You're already in a good place, and I want to help accelerate that. Uh, if you want to find me, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's where I hang out about 95% of the time when I'm not posting pictures of my dog on Instagram. But if you really want to reach out to me, this is the email address that I used for this experiment. And that's exactly what this is today, right? We are jumping into a lot of emails. And that email address is the email address that I used to email 280 designers from that email address. Now, I did it from my Gmail because if I reached out for my corporate email address and I reached out to uh, web designers and graphic designers, they might think that I had a job for them. Instead, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a conversation or as much of a conversation as I could have over email um, about what resonates with candidates, about what is in a good message, right? So you've got a, you got a few things that we got to unpack here, right? Gmail has a series of deliverability rules, and it includes all kinds of things like DCAM and SPF, which is what I found out by reading the cold email manifesto is not something that I put on my skin before I go to be the beach, and DMARC. Um, you've got to have proper domain records if you're emailing from uh, a specific domain. There are limitations on how many emails you can send before you get thrown into the spam folder. You've got to use proper email techniques to make sure that you are reaching out to people and that it's resonating with them and not landing in one of those folders. Because today we want to land in the main folder inside of their email or preferably their Gmail account. And for that reason, I limited it to 20 cold emails a day. In this book by Alex and Robert, it suggested that you needed to warm up your email address if it wasn't used to sending hundreds or thousands of emails every day from a Gmail back domain or a Yahoo mail back domain or an iCloud back domain so or, or Outlook back domain. So I don't send a lot of emails out of my personal email. I send a lot of emails out of my work email address. You may have gotten those McAfee emails from me in the past or somebody posing to be me. But what it came down to was another book about deliverability and the formula for maximizing inbox placement. So I went through and kind of pulled apart. Yeah, that's right. Total dork mode on this crew. Um, I used, I, I wanted to find out what email authentication was using a domain key. Um, and it's genuine and it's an email that doesn't change its image or context throughout sending the email. We may have seen that in, in deal-based emails, like the kind that you get from The Gap that offers you 20% on one day and 30% the next day. Uh, the sender policy framework, uh, this, if you will, is kind of the way that you make sure that the email is authenticated and it prevents spoofing and spam, right? So it's a vital part of the email security that allows network administrators to create records that identify what mail servers are good 
and what mail servers are bad and who is allowed to send email without being spam. It really helps the um, internet service providers identify what's a scam email, what's a fisher, what's a spoofer, um, what's a uh, salacious email, right? Because we don't, we don't want any of that, right? And then there's DMARC. So DMARC has actually been in the news um, at the beginning of the year. And that's kind of what set me on this second email journey. Because if you'll remember, there was an email journey I went on for HRTX where I was sending out 300 emails to people. And I was trying to garner their responses and figure out what subject lines work. Don't worry, we're going to get to that in a minute. But this is all new data because we're going after designers this time. So DMARC is basically the framework that puts together the domain keys and the sender policy framework to make sure that I am not a spammer, hacker, fracker, freaker, or fisher, right? Okay, now that you've been sufficiently bored to death, I decided to Gmail 20 people a day for two weeks. And that's how I arrived at the 280 people. But you might be wondering, Ashley's wondering, I know Ashley's wondering, how did I find 280 designers? I did a simple site search, and you can reproduce this and go site colon behance.net, which basically says, yo, Google, I only want to look at one internet site at a time, and that is Behance. And then I said, quotation marks at gmail.com, which basically suggested that I wanted to see on the page a visibly available Gmail address. Like I said, I did this the long way. You could do this so much easier with a higher EZ, okay? And then I said designer. Could be a dress designer, could be a graphic designer, could be any kind of designer. And that's how I met Lacan. So as you can see, uh, we've got a graphic designer, we've got an email address, and we've got um, their location in India, right? So this means that I'm reaching out to 280 people via Gmail from an email address that isn't used on the regular to find individuals and to warm this up. So I know what you're thinking. You're like, what did Brian say? So this is the email that I sent to Lakana. Lakana, I hope you're enjoying your Monday. I wanted to reach out as I'm a recruiter doing research and I need your advice. Specifically, I'm reaching out to graphic designers around the world that I found on Behance. While I'm not trying to recruit you, I am wondering, what do you look for in a message from a recruiter? With your background, I'm sure you receive a lot of messages. Would you mind sharing what's a good message? What do you want to hear from a recruiter? Thanking you in advance, Brian. And there's all my contact information, right? And if you'll notice, I did use a subject line that has uh, her name in the subject line. I'll get to that in a minute. But what did we find, right? Because we were doing this experiment and we're doing it not from our corporate email address or from our LinkedIn email address or LinkedIn domain address. 280 email Gmails sent two weeks in July, 65 responses with a 23% response rate. Just to put it, put it out there, that's lower than what I have for my work domain um, do I know why? Maybe we're going to get into that. So what did they say, right? Because I reached out to two, to 280 people and 65 people came back to me. What did they say? Well, some were helpful. Uh, hey, Brian, happy Monday to you, or as I'd like to call it, how it is again, how it, how is it Monday again day? First off, I appreciate the no pressure approach, not trying to recruit me. That's a breath of fresh air. Most messages I get are like, hey, I've got this amazing opportunity, which really is just another Monday for them too. So what makes a good recruiter? It's simple, really, be human. No one wants to read a message that sounds like it was written by a robot who just got a degree in business buzzwords. Personalization goes a long way. If you can show me you've done your homework and I don't just mean skimming my profile, I'm already more interested. Also, be direct but friendly. Cut the fluff, but don't cut the personality. Tell me what you're offering, why you thought of me, and maybe throw in something to show that you're not just casting a wide net. And humor. If you can make me laugh, I might actually remember you. I hope that helps. Thanks for reaching out. Good luck with your research. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll see a message from you that I can't resist. 
best Dimitri. Dimitri is on the first list of search terms. I mean, on, on search results on Behance. Check it out. Somewhere in the middle, Kara. Hope you're having a productive Tuesday. I'll cut to the chase. I'm not here to play recruiter whisperer. You're right. I do get a ton of messages. And frankly, most of them are noise. So here's some unsolicited advice. If you want people who matter, if you want to reach people who matter, start by not spamming their inbox with generic requests for free advice. Do your homework, figure out what adds value and respect people's time. Good luck with your research, Kara. Okay, uh, I still think that there were some positive takeaways from this message, not because I've got a dent in my forehead. It's because reiterating like Dimitri suggested, do your homework and figure out how you can add value. Subject line was need some advice. Brian, I hope you're enjoying your Tuesday too. For what it's worth, I always specify the day of the week that I'm sending the email. That was really the only variation. I hope you're enjoying your email too, because your email just made mine more interesting. Let me get this straight. You're reaching out to ask me how to do your job better. On what planet does that make sense? I'm not here to give you free consulting on how to craft a message that doesn't make me want to hit delete faster than you can say Behance. If you're a recruiter, your job is to know what catches our attention, not to send out mass emails fishing for advice. The fact that you're researching this by cold emailing designers like me is not only lazy, it's borderline insulting. Next time, try doing your own research, maybe even use that handy little tool called the internet and stop wasting our time. Good luck, Samantha. Thanks, Samantha. And then maybe this was just right. Brian, I appreciate the outreach. Always help, happy to offer some thoughts that could help push the boundaries of recruiting. When it comes to messages from a recruiter, what really stands out is clarity and purpose. Again, that theme, be concise, be purposeful, and be deliberate. Skip the fluff and get straight to the point. Designers like engineers are problem solvers. Shout out to Rich Moss, who asked me what my subject line would be to, uh, to designers, and I invited you to be here today. Thanks for showing up, Rich. I appreciate the support. Uh, designers like engineers are problem solvers, so if you want their attention, present them with a challenge worth tackling or an opportunity that genuinely aligns with their work and passions. Also, respect their time, a reoccurring theme. A concise message that acknowledges their past work and how it fits into what you're offering can make all the difference. And always, always be authentic. No one wants to feel like just another number in a mass outreach campaign. Hopes this helps. Wishing you success in your research. Best, Alberto. Alberto was from page four of the of the Behance results. So what did I do with the 65 emails? I copied and pasted them and fed them all into a word cloud to figure out what people wanted to hear or what were reoccurring themes. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, just looking at this, like, it looks like Monday was had something to do with it, that people responded to emails that they were sent on Monday. I don't have enough data about that, right? Like Mike, Mike was Mike is the data guy. Like, get with Mike. Like, I'll give him the data set and we'll go from there. Uh, specifically around research, recruiter. Let's be honest. I think Behance and recruiters are false positives. But what did come through was advice, purpose, and be human, or I align authenticity to being human. So I want to stop there for just a quick second. I want to look through any of the questions in the chat and see if there's anything else that I can answer before I go on. Okay. Uh, apparently there are some lawsuits that are going on and, uh, and, uh, I don't know about that. But what I do know is that I took to heart that I should do some more research. And part of that research was where does the subject line matter, right? So what I did is I came up with five subject lines, four emails per subject line per day, and they were all sent at 10 a.m. Eastern. So that was Sunday through Saturday, Sunday through Saturday. And I used the word advice because I'd used that in a previous experience, advice, please. So two words, need some advice, 
calling them and personalizing them by name, need some advice. And then I chose to use an emoji. So let's go into why I did this. Why the clown knows emoji. Aaron Lentz, love you, buddy. I can't wait to party with you at Rackfest, right? Um, actually, I went with the red dot emoji. So what's with the subject line length anyhow or why? So according to Active Campaign, the length of an email subject line can depend, can depend on different factors, but it's recommended to keep it between 30 and 50 characters or four to seven words. Apparently, I could have made a longer email, but I, I kept it short and sweet to the point because as Marcel had suggested at a source con two years ago, the shorter the subject line, the better it would perform. Thomas Julian, totally agree with that. Owe you a call. Most people will first see your email as a push notification on their lock screen, right? Once they open their email client though, anything longer than 50 characters might be cut off. So for the Gmail app for iOS and Android, it displays up to 70 characters of the subject line in the inbox, while the Outlook and I, for iOS and Android displays up to 50 characters. So about the emoji thing, this is where I'm coming to things from a, a second pivot perspective, right? Is that you can find emojis for almost everything under the sun. Please get your head out of the gutter. Um, and one of the things that, that I look for is I look for the red dot, um, about six years ago, uh, at a HRTX that was held in Atlanta, there was a conversation around juicing your email return rate, um, and using an emoji to get higher response rates. So I go to Emojipedia, it shows you what the emoji looks like as it shows up on multiple devices. Can you use emojis on LinkedIn? Yes. Can you use them in Gmail? Yes. Can you use them in Outlook? Yes. But that is besides the, when was the last, uh, Brett, it was in 19, it was in 2019 in Atlanta. Uh, thank you, Angie. Angie, that one in Chicago was excellent. We should have partied harder. Um, all right. So about the emoji pivot, there's a Medium article from 2018. It's, it's cited at the bottom that emojis produce a higher response rate. So now we got something that we're testing. We're getting into the data. We're going to have a little bit of fun with this. Is will an emoji increase the chance of my email being read? Marketers are seeing success using emojis when used well. I don't know if I used my emoji well. Maybe the data will tell us. Um, many claim that emojis help content stand out and when strategically used and sparingly. Now, I only sent each one of these individuals one email. I don't know if a subsequent email with an emoji would have prompted a higher response rate. Swift Page said that there is a 29% increase in the open rate if you use emojis. There's a 28% increase in the click-through rate, i.e. the people who respond or see the email, the link in the email. Now, Return Path suggested that if you use different emojis, you will get different responses. And they found that the poop emoji is the most effective emoji across all the days of the year. However, I didn't want to send a poop emoji advice. I didn't think that that would make much sense, right? Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate that. So response rates per subject line. Advice. I got six responses. Go me. Advice, please, a little bit longer. I got 10 responses. Need some advice. I got 19 responses. Name, which was personalized, and we talked about personalization. I got 13 responses. And advice, please, I got 17. If you'll notice, there was a subsequent lift of advice, please, with an emoji by almost 20, I mean, almost 50%, uh, right? Valerie, you're doing it right. You got you got my attention, right? So responses per subject line. Advice only got 2%. Advice, please, got 3.6%. Need some advice, 6.8%. Need some advice, got 46 And need advice, please, got 6.1%. This makes me wonder. What's weird about the subject line, 
right? Like who would use a subject line that has 50 characters in it? Like that's like having a Boolean search string that uses all 32 terms, right? Um, it has to be catchy. Angie, I agree with you wholeheartedly, right? Um, no to the eggplant, Tracy, right there, right there with you. My question is, would a longer subject line perform better? And that's where I'm going with my next set of tests. Because typically, when I reach out to candidates at McAfee, I say, first name, comma, protect the future, which is four. Or I say, defend the globe, which is three, right? And so I'm wondering now if a longer subject line with an emoji would be juiced, right? And now I wonder, you've got all this information at your fingertips. You know how to find these candidates. You know how to email them, even though it's pretty tenuous to go through and do 20. I mean, like, like you'd be surprised, like, you know, the 14th of July, I was starting this and I'm like, this is going to be awesome. And then by the 21st, I was like, what the hell? Um, but the, but the, yeah, be careful, TLDR. I agree with that. Right. Um, I'm also curious about changing the context of the email and making it longer or shorter and only having one ask. Um, but that's that's it. And that is my rock and roll. And I am uh, happy to connect with you on my Gmail address at LinkedIn um, or, um, or uh, you can give me a call or a text message like I know several people are doing right now. Um, Dude, thank you, Adam Fitz. Thank you. I appreciate that, guys.